A public group is an admin-defined grouping of users that have a function in common and are primarily used for security and access. A common way admins would create and use public groups is to simplify the creation of sharing roles. So for example, let's say that we have four teams of sales reps globally by region. Currently, they do not have access into each other's opportunity records because the organization-wide defaults, or OWDs, have been set to private. However, we do want to grant them access into each other's opportunity records. By using an owner-based sharing role, the admin can grant the correct access level needed, either the ability to see or see and edit each other's opportunity records. So in order to meet our requirement to share opportunity records to this global team, we would need to create 16 sharing roles, and here's why. One sharing role would share opportunity records of the North, Central, and South American team with each other, and three additional roles would need to be created to share those AMER team records with Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Asia Pacific, and Latin America's sales teams. Multiply that by four across each region and you have 16 sharing roles. That's a lot of sharing roles. Instead of needing 16 sharing roles, an admin can create one public group that is comprised of all of the sales reps globally. And you can use their roles in the role hierarchy, for example, and call it global sales. With that public group, one opportunity sharing role can be created to share all records owned by anyone in the global sales public group with anyone who is a member of the global sales public group. This is much more efficient and a better alternative than needing to create 16 sharing roles to meet one requirement. Now that we understand what public groups are, let's review how to create a public group using that global sales team example. Now I'm within the setup menu, and before I can create that sharing role, I first have to define the public group. So I'm gonna come up to my quick find, and I'm gonna start typing in public, and I'm gonna select public groups. From here, we can create that public group for our global sales team. If I come over to the middle of my main screen and I click on this new button, the very first thing that we have to do here is to give it a name or a label. And I'm gonna call this my global sales team. I'm gonna let the API name pre-populate. And what you also are gonna notice is this checkbox right underneath saying grant access using hierarchies. If I keep this enabled, what that is going to mean is that any of the users that are above this grouping within the role hierarchy will also gain access to these records. I'm gonna keep that enabled for now. Next is determine who is going to be comprising of this group. So I have public groups, I have roles, roles and subordinates, and users. For this purpose, I'm gonna select roles, and I'm gonna scroll down to find my Amer sales rep role, my APAC sales rep role, my EMEA sales rep role, and my LATAM sales rep role. The reason I didn't need to select my roles and subordinates of maybe the manager level is because I have that grant access using hierarchies checkbox. I can come up to the top of my page and click save. So now that I have these four global teams or these four regions in a global public group, I'm gonna come over into my search and now I'm going to search for sharing settings. I can now start to create the sharing role. By going into sharing settings, and if I continue to scroll down past my OWDs, I'm gonna create a new sharing role. By clicking on new, I'm gonna name this role share opportunities with global sales team. I'm gonna also put a description that's going to say grant read access to the global sales team to each other's opportunities. And I am going to keep it on an owner based sharing role. So you have two options here. I'm going to share records based off of who owns the record or based off of criteria. Coming down to step three, now I'm going to be able to select my public group that I just created. 
of my global sales team. And I'm going to select the same global sales team to share those records with. So I'm not only sharing the global sales team's opportunities with the global sales team, now members of the global sales team will now gain access to the other members within that global sales team. For my level of access, I'm gonna keep as read only. I only have read or read write access. And I'm gonna click save. Now I will be prompted to confirm my changes. And when I come up and click okay, what's gonna happen is the system is going to recalculate our sharing settings to open up this level of access. I don't know about you, but that was a lot easier than sitting there and creating 16 sharing rules. Now there are other areas where public groups are used to grant access. And those areas include granting access to report, dashboard, and email template folders. Record owners can also manually share their records to public groups. And you can use public groups to share list views to users within a public group. Queue members can also be comprised of a public group. So to recap, public groups are created using a combination of individual users, other public groups, roles or territories, and roles or territories, and their subordinates. Public groups are commonly used when defining sharing roles to make rules easier to create, understand, and to keep things simple. 